Hello everyone and welcome back. Wasn't even going to do a video this week because Thursday in the morning I'm heading up to the tent and then Melissa will be heading up there Thursday night for for the weekend. And uh, But I did move the fish house today and tonight I'm going to hook water up to it which we haven't done yet because it's still winterized from the previous owners who had it winterized for over a year. So we'll see how interesting that is getting all that fired up. I did get in here today and move all the bales, the old bales from the garden out, and finally it's looking cleaned up around here. The first thing I'll have to do is go underneath the mobile home here and actually I go inside and I have part of the floor cut up where I can pull it up and I can get down to where that water stubs up from underground and then I've got that all insulated and heat taped. I just shut the heat tape off two days ago. And that heat tapes all the way underground because the water for this comes from the actual well. It doesn't even go into the house. So I always have to make sure that that's heat taped well because if I bust a water line here, which happened the first year we were in here because, you know, we really didn't know what was going on. At that time, the water ran all the way to the sink in there and that's where it busted. And so I come in here and I cut it off, put a regular um, valve on there so I don't have to heat the extra 30 feet of line or whatever because we don't have a sink in there anymore anyway. But then I hook up to that and I'll run the hose out here and that's where I run the water from, you know, to run the garden and all of that because, yeah, there's no shut off in the house. Once that breaks, it's just solid running and <laughs> the pump keeps going. So I always have to be careful with that. Not sure how good you can see it, but that blue, lighter blue, that's the turn off on and off for the water. So I just hooked the green hose up to it there. I took the insulation off and you can see my heat tape and everything there. And I turned the water on, so let's go outside and see how it works. The best water pressure, nothing in the house has water pressure like this hose does. That water that comes straight in here is just amazing. I just messaged the guy that I got it from. He hasn't got back yet, but I've never seen one of these that looks like this. Usually you put your wrench right here, and I always remove that uh, when I winterize it, but I'm guessing they had to do something different, and this nut and this nut go on there together, and then you would put a wrench on this, the farthest one in to remove that. I'm just gonna leave it like it is, turn on the water. I, I, I did the bypasses inside, which are right here, because this one here was open, and then this one was shut, and this one was shut, and then you drain the water heater, and then you run your antifreeze through it. So now I shut this. These two are open, so then cold water goes in, hot water comes out. This is probably the easiest one to get at that I've had in any of the campers. Letting all the air out of the water heater right now.
I don't seem to have any leaks inside anywhere. Everything seemed to work great. It looks like this thing leaks a little bit. And I'm kind of leery. I'll, I'll buy a new one of these, but you, they get rusty. And like when I pull this out with the work camper, it's really bad. Mosquitoes, look at them things. They're out. This is the first day that they've really been out. Um, I worry every year that I'm not going to get it back in there. So I'll probably buy a new one to put in there, but this is not bad at all. This is, and it might stop, you know, once everything has been sitting for a while with water. But let's go ahead and turn on that water heater and see what, what happens. Everything else I'm real happy with. Melissa was just out here and uh, everything works great. It fired up. With my work camper, it never leaked water until like it would come on and then when it water got hot and it shut off it would leak a little bit of water not for very long then it would stop and it would do that every time I suppose the hotter water causes pressure in there you know I need to crawl under this bed and a few weeks ago the radio stopped working so I want to see if uh if a fuse went like in the fuse panel or something or if there's an inline fuse it seemed to me that the radio didn't work and I think the light below it doesn't work so I don't know yeah one fuse is burned out I don't know if you could hear me, but one fuse is burned out. I love that panel, how it has a little light next to the one that burns out. <laughs> oh, it just with the other campers when you had to constantly, you know, pull out every fuse and look at it. And then sometimes you look at them and you don't even, you can't even really tell. And I have a lot of fuses, so. It's a 20 amp. I had to go look all over to find a needle nose player to get that out. I need to get into my work camper. I was going to bring that up for the, by the house today, but I didn't get around to it so I can start getting that cleaned up and everything to put it for sale. But I have a toolbox underneath the TV in the cabinet that has all kinds of the little, all the tool stuff that you need for a camper, but you can't get in that unless you open up the slide. So I'm pretty sure I'll have to uh, plug it in to do that because that battery. I can't remember if that held a good charge over winter or not. Let's see if we can get this radio going. Well, I could not get that to work and then I kept clicking them in and then this here, which does feed the radio, this is what they pulled power from. 
All of a sudden I had smoke coming out of here. Thought it was the light bulb, it wasn't. Pulled this out, everything was nice and cool. This was hot. This power point, it's still hot. So, I guess I need to get a new one of these. Yeah, the smoke was barreling out of there. It's like, oh no. And I see that they have a black and white wire going up to the radio. I took off the side in here. Ah, I fried a whole freaking wire off, I think. Huh, I don't see any wire in that, but what is that? Sure did. It fried the ground. Okay, so that was it because there must have been some wires touching right here because now I separated this ground so nothing's there and then separated these two in here which should be the same. Anyway, the 20 amp fuse then worked. and the light works. So I need a new one of these and then I'll put a new connector on here, a new ground wire with a connector. Radio came back on. The weird thing about that whole entire situation was when you look into the fuse box there's like 10 or maybe I think it's 12 fuses straight in a row. The only one that has anything written is the top and it says radio and it was, you know, written by, not typed, you know, it's been just written with marker, radio, 20 amp, and then a little arrow underneath it and it says backlight. So, that's the top one. The bottom one is the one that was burned out. And that bottom one, when I plugged it in, also turned the fan on for the, uh, what is that thing called? The, uh, the thing that takes the AC power and turns it into DC. Anyway, that fan came on and now, it, it's, it's not on now that I switched that wire, but I imagine it was quite a quite a pull on that with the ground. I don't know what it was hitting, but got my radio back anyway. ACDC, of course. Alright, so I need to order one of these, and what's the chances I can find one of those that are that match? It actually looks like it's just the hookups, but since this got burned, I think I'd be better off buying a new one. But it looks like this screws into this. So even oh, you hear that? Ah, just burnt the fuse out again. That's weird. Why is it doing that though? Why is when this ground touches this, it should just create a ground, or maybe that is a power. It should not blow the fuse. What's going I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Well, we're not gonna worry about it tonight. Fuse is blown, don't have to worry about the power here. We'll get her fixed up. It's got to be right in this unit. Something is touching something that it's not supposed to. Oh, the water heater just shut off. Good hot water. Ooh, that's really hot water. and hot.
Yep. That's plenty hot too. Well, that's it for now. I will leave the water on here and the hot water heater until bedtime. And right now it's probably 7.30. I'll leave it on for two hours. Come out here, shut off the water heater. I'll actually probably come out here and turn the hot water on long enough for the water heater to pop back on again. And then before bed, I will shut all the water down to it and then just turn it on like tomorrow or the next day and test it again. Everything seems to be working good. And it's just a, a couple minutes after 10 o'clock right now. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. We got the water working in the uh, fish house. And it's a little bit less than a month until Melissa and I, I we have reservations uh, at a campground and a new lake that I've never fished that I've always wanted to. So I'm excited about that. Water heater off. I'll shut the water off to it so everything's fine and then I'll turn everything back on tomorrow just to make sure it works. And we are four days away from being back up at the tent. I will see you guys on the next video.